All right. We'll give it just a second here, to, and somebody, if somebody will check the volume, just to make sure that we have that I'm that I'm on. I know people are probably wondering where we are, but we're he, we're really here. Here we are. Uh, we've had a wonderful time this morning in the in ministry um, of the Holy Spirit, which he's the he's the ultimate minister in our midst, and so uh, very thankful for that. Um, give it just a second here for people to realize if they didn't go get get uh, breakfast if, or something. And I hear, yeah, I hear myself now. Not that that's a good thing, but all right. Okay. Um, let's, uh, what I want to, what I want to do this morning in the note with the notes. In fact, y'all were leading into it with, with, um, I've got, um, Paul said that he wished that we would all prophesy and I, I was hearing that so much this morning the, the, that that pr- that that wish that Paul had, that prayer that Paul had, was manifesting here. And Paul was praying it too, by the way. So, um, but the, the 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 manifestation of prophecy is is coming forth, and I think that that's prophecy, that prophecy part is really prophetic. I hate, I hate to use the term the similar, but that's that's the that's the way it, I see things happening this morning, and so. Last night, as I was, I had all kinds of notes, and I've been, you know, looking at things all week. But um, this this word came into my heart last night. And it's a prophecy, and so I want to I want to do a, the first section of your notes is a prophecy, the second section is a prayer, and so and it's an apostolic prayer. It's a prayer by Paul. So I just want to prophesy this because Deborah was and in, in everybody was Tina. Everybody was mentioning this prophecy, which was like amazing to me. That y'all were prophesying what I was going to prophesy, um, and I think that that, that just is, is so amazing. Good morning, Crystal. And he confirmed his word, doesn't he? Yes, he, conf- he confirmed it before I even started to you know to minister, and so it just gives me such comfort to know that he spoke this into my heart, knowing that he was going to speak it into your hearts, and then we were going to speak it out and make him. It was going to be uh, something that I that he's going to he's going to make happen. He's the way that this is going to happen. But he wants us to prophesy and declare what he's go- what he's going to do. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? He wants to he wants us to participate and see that it's all him. Uh, so Hag- Haggai or Haggai, however you pronounce that, uh, it's right after Zephaniah, if that helps, and right before Zechariah. So right between the two Z's is Hag- Haggai. He so, he, they called it. I don't think there's any such thing as a minor prophet. Good. Good morning, Melissa. We miss you this morning, and um, praying for your grandson. P- praying for your grandson. Yes, Amen. And so, uh, Haggai chapter two. Um, it's an interesting. It's very short. It's just two chapters. So, chapter two and verse six. Um, in your, um, this is the New King James Version. In your notes. Um, it says, for, "For thus says the Lord of Hosts." Once more, it is a little while, I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come. Did y'all, did y'all catch that? That's what y'all were talking about. I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations, and that nations, that word encompasses every tribe and tongue and people and, and, and all every family. And they shall come, and this is one of my favorite names for the Lord. They will come to the desire of all nations. Jesus, that's, this, is his, this is one of his names, is the desire of all nations. And that's the title of the message this, this morning. Is the, he, is, he, is, he, he has, has been and always will be the desire of all nations, and they don't know that yet, like, like, like uh, <laughs> Anne was saying. Yeah. They don't know that yet. A lot of nations don't know, a lot of people don't know that. Yes. That They're looking for desire, the, the fulfillment of desire everywhere, but in the, in the ultimate way that the desire is satisfied. But yet he's not giving up on that because he, know, because he is a desire of all nations. And I love this. This is a prophecy. And I will fill this temple with glory says the Lord of hosts. Now, I, I, if you would circle the word this, uh, temple, because when, he was, when Haggai was prophesying this prophecy, there was no temple. There was no temple. They were in captivity. 
And so uh, there's, there's an important part of this prophecy, I think, for us to, to glean. And that is, uh, I've got a few scriptures there I want to go over just, just briefly. But just, just a little historical, they did, they did get released from captivity and they went back and they rebuilt the temple in Jerusalem, but there was no Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was never a part of that, that next temple. And because, that's because the, the, the Ark of the Covenant, Jesus Christ himself, was going to walk into that temple and become the Ark of the Covenant. So it says, in fact, there's a scripture that says, and suddenly he will come to his temple. It's, it was his temple. It, it was his temple all along. It, even in the tabernacle in the wilderness, it was all about him. They just didn't know it. Uh, but the temple that he's talking about, this temple that he's talking that, that Haggai is prophesying about, is more personal than that. Uh, and if you look at those those scriptures, 1 Corinthians chapter three and verse sixteen, and also chapter six, verse nineteen, Paul makes a statement to the Corinthians. He says, you know, he says, "Do you not know?" that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You're the temple. So the house of God is not this place that we're meeting or whatever building that people build or, or whatever they do. The house of God is us. We are the house of God. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And both of those scriptures, those first two scriptures, um, are uh, that what Paul was, was saying was, was, was about us, that we are the temple. He says that Jesus says, when I go away, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build a place for you. I, I'm going, I'm, uh, you can't come with me where I'm going, uh, but I'm going to come and, and, and make my uh, abode with you. I'm going to abide with you because it was, it was important for him to go and, and do what he had to do for us so that we could become the temple in which he inhabited by his spirit. So we're the temple that's being prophesied here. And uh, in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter uh, 60, you could just read the whole thing if you want. I started to just, just put no, uh, no uh, numbers there. I just, I just, it's just such a good uh, um, chapter, a prophetic chapter. But it, it says, concerning this prophecy that Haggai was prophesying, it says, Arise, uh, and, then, and this is the, um, this is the, the, the um, amplified version of this scripture. Arise from the depression and prostration in which your circumstances have kept you. Mm -hmm. yeah. is that, I don't know if that fits you, but it sure fits me. Um, Rise to a new life. Shine, be radiant with the glory of the Lord. For your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And we know what it says in Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23, says basically the same thing. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and dense darkness all, all peoples. But the Lord shall rise. See, this is a prophecy of Haggai. The Lord shall arise upon you, O Jerusalem, and his glory shall be seen on you. Now, we're the, we're the, the, the new Jerusalem. We're, we're seated with him right now. And that last scripture um, in Hebrews chapter 12 is it says that, um, well, I want to I read it to you. He, Hebrews chapter 12. Remember, we have come, not we're trying to get there, as Tina was saying. We're not trying to climb up any ladders. We have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem. We, we have already come there. That's why we're the temple that's manifested on the earth right now. And Jesus is the way through, through his torn flesh is the veil that we're inviting people in uh, as this temple that's on the earth today. But uh, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 27, uh, as, a, as Paul, I believe it's Paul who wrote this uh, in Hebrew, this letter was written in Hebrew for the Hebrews um, and for all those that, that, that can profit from the fact of being caught up in legalism <laughs> and, being, and escaping from it, escaping the snare of that. But it says in verse 27, now this... this uh, this expression yet once more indicates the final removal and transformation of all that can be shaken. That is of that which has been created in order that what cannot be shaken may remain and, and continue. Uh, Psalms 102 talks about that as well. So everything that can be shaken is being shaken and, and it's by, it's, and, and it says there, and uh, um, then they shall come to the desire of nations. So our our uh, prophetic um, 
declaration this morning is, is for the Lord, for you to, for the fulfillment of this prophecy in our lives and through our lives, that we could be participants in declaring and in, in bringing this, causing this prophecy to be, that we are the temple that's declaring the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ. And so therefore, uh, we declare that this, at this time, uh, and I believe we're in the, at the cusp of the, of the fullness of time, uh, that this 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 prophecy, all those things that have that have that have impeded people being able to see everything that's that's all the circumstances and situations in people's lives that are that are blurring their 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 ability to to, to, to view all of that's going to be shaken, and the desire of all nations will be able to express and and, and fulfill this prophecy in our midst through us and in uh, in us, Amen, as the temple of the Holy Spirit on the earth. And everybody that agreed said, Amen. Amen. That's, right. that's right. That's right. So be it. And that's another so way. So it is. Yeah. Uh, now, so uh, now let's pray this prayer in Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Um, this is Paul praying for us. He said, may, may the God of your hope. See, he, you know, he's, one version says that the, the regular New King James says that and the God of hope. But I like to say, may the God of your hope so fill, so fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the experience of your revelation of Jesus Christ, through your faith, that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound and be overflowing, bubbling over with hope. Amen? amen. Everybody say amen to that. That's, that's Paul's prayer for us. So um, we are living in, in a time where there's a lot of people that are, that are hopeless. You know, they have hopelessness. And there is only one answer for that hope, and that's the desire of all nations. That's Jesus. And so I want to be so bubbling over and, and be over, so overflowing with his hope uh, because it's being shed abroad in our hearts. This hope is being shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Um, that and and this this that that's, we're so overwhelmed with this, in spite of the circumstances in our life, that we can, can that we can help in the fulfillment and and the expression of the desire of all nations uh, um, to this world, Amen? Amen. Okay, let's go to Hebrews. We we were gonna we were gonna start talking about Hebrews uh, again this morning. Hebrews chapter two this week. Um, good morning, Kim. Good to see you this morning. Um, I don't know if I missed somebody. If I did, I didn't mean to. Uh, Hebrews, we noticed last week that Hebrews chapter 1 is about the fact that, that even though God spoke in past times uh, through other ways and through other prophets, now he's, now he's speaking through the way maker, right? Because he's speaking the language of Jesus, the, langu the language of the Son. And for a person that's born into the family, those that are born again into the family, he's speaking our language, because the spirit of sonship is what he is speaking. The spirit of sonship is acknowledging Jesus as the authority over all things and acknowledging that we are his, the, the sons of God. We are the sons of the Father. Uh, and and that's, that's the, uh, the, the lang language in which we have to understand the, the covenant in which we walk. Otherwise, it, can't be, it won't be profitable to us. Uh, if we don't, if we don't understand the way in which the new covenant works and it differentiates from the old, we're not walking by uh, our own stri striving. We're walking by rest in what He strived and did for us. Amen. And so that's the language of the Son: is that all things, all things were accomplished by Him, and nothing uh, that needed to be accomplished was not was not finished by him. And it says, even though we may not see all things in that position, we still we see Jesus. And that's what's in chapter chapter two. So there's a little bit of a warning here in the beginning of chapter two about about uh, wavering or, or that we that we don't be in, uh, that we become attentive uh, unattentive to the truth uh, and drift off course. And of course, most a lot of my life, I know Briscoe, a lot of us were off course. We had drifted off course because we didn't know, we weren't hearing the language of the Son. The true we weren't hearing the true gospel. Yeah, uh, and he says that, he says that in chat, the first part of chapter 2 because he says uh, um, in uh, that, little, that little number there, what is that? 
Number three, I think it's verse three. The Lord, the Lord Himself was the first to announce these things. This is the this is a Passion translation, and those who heard Him firsthand confirmed their accuracy. Then God added His witness to theirs. He validated their ministry, and this was this was the next generation after Jesus left, with signs, astonishing wonders, and all kinds of powerful miracles, and get, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit, which He distributed as He desired. So you see that you're constantly going to see this WWW being trans, you know, translated. This is another place where the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all mentioned. Uh, and so it, it, the part that we, the, the part I want to take from that is that we get, we, we always want to keep our hearts centered uh, on on truth. Jesus, is, Jesus said, "I'm the truth." When he's standing before for Pilate, Pilate said, "What is truth?" Well, I'm standing right before you. Uh, and that truth is what will set us free from ourselves first. Um, and we need, we need to be delivered from ourselves. And that's, the, that's one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to see that in just a minute here. Uh, so um, now look at uh, when you go on down, it says um, um, in verse 8, this means that God has left nothing outside the control of His Son, even, even if presently we have not yet to see this accomplished. But we see Jesus. Everybody say, we see Jesus. And we know He's, he's accomplished all things. And we're going to witness the desire of all nations to finish the, the accomplishing of everything. All the, things that, all the hopes that we've had. You know, um, uh, what does it say in Proverbs about hope deferred makes the heart sick? But when it's realized, it's a tree of life. Jesus is our tree of life. And He is the, he is the hope, the, the fulfillment of the hope of all nations and the hope of all promises in the Word. Amen? And so it says, it was for it was by God's grace that He experienced death's bitterness on, on behalf of everyone. It was the will of the Father and the work of the Son. And now the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is witnessing to that. Amen? Uh, so now He... Um, God made, God made Jesus a pioneer of our salvation, per, perfect through His sufferings. See, it's His sufferings that we have fellowship around, not ours. Mm -hmm. if, I'm, if we're just doing a testimony of our sufferings, that's not going to change a thing, is it? Mm -hmm. But we have fellowship around His sufferings. That changes things. Mm -hmm. Amen? Uh, so it says, for, he, for now He brings many sons uh, and daughters to share in His glory. Um, Look at the footnote on that, on, on letter H there. It says that uh, uh, bring many children into His glorious state. Our grace gives us the glory that Jesus has. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. That grace is giving unto us the same glory that Jesus has. And so, and um, Jesus, the Holy One, makes us holy. And as sons and daughters, we now be, belong to to the same Father. Whew. So he's so he is not ashamed or embarrassed. I don't care what we've done or what we did last week. He's still he's not ashamed because Jesus it was Jesus that made us perfect in our in our spirit. Amen. Uh, to sh ashamed or embarrassed to to, to uh, introduce us as his brothers and sisters. Remember Joseph doing that with his brothers. <coughs> they didn't deserve it, did they? Okay, um, I will reveal who you really are to my brothers and sisters. So that revelation is happening. But here's the part I really want you to see. In, in uh, the notes, the third section of your notes there, um, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, and this is the amplified version. It says, Since therefore these his children share in flesh and blood in the physical nature of human beings, he himself in a similar manner partook of the same nature that by going through death he might bring to naught, and underline this, make of no effect him, who's him? Satan. The devil, yes, Satan, who, and circle the word had, had the power of death. Yeah. He no longer has the power of death. Hallelujah. That is the devil. Now, I, I, I purposely put and uh, in bold letters and underline because there's an and to that part. It's not that just the devil has no power, but look what he wants to do as a result, which is what he's needing to do in my life, and he needed to do it really big last week, but I wasn't letting him. 
I wasn't, I wasn't participating with this process, but the Holy Spirit, you know, I want this. I want this and. Amen? Amen. Also, and also that he might deliver and what? Completely. Completely set free all those who through the haunting fear of death were held in bondage through the whole course of their lives. I mean, with this COVID stuff, there's just such a fear uh, in the world today. And it's this fear he's talking about. He wants us to set free, set us free uh, from this fear, uh, completely be, to be completely set free because the enemy no longer has any power of death over us. Amen? That's what you say, you know, we were talking about last week that says that most of the promises of God are yes. Oh, is it all? I've, I keep getting that mixed up. <laughs> All of the promises of God are yes and amen. We're going to see that in a different translation here in a minute. To the glory of God through, through us. He wants to show through His Son through us. Amen? Uh, and so, now, Hebrews chapter... Uh, I'm moving ahead because that's what, that was the main thing I wanted to, for you to glean from chapter 2 today. We're going to, we're going to build through this as we go along. But I think this is the part that, that um, the world wants, wants and needs to be delivered from. Uh, they need to know who they are and they need to know that there's no more death to a person that's in Christ. Because Paul, like Paul said, I died, you died. He said, he said, you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Amen. Pretty safe spot to be. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yep. As they say in Texas, yep. That's our new, that's our amen. Yep. Okay, Hebrews chapter 6, uh, in verse 17 through 20 in the Amplified Version. Uh, my Amplified is not falling apart like my new King James, so I may be switching over to this. But I, I love the translation and, and the bridge between the new King James and the Amplified, to me, in my heart, has been the Passion translation. Yeah. There's such a bridge there. And now when I read all this extra stuff, the passion's already, already so melted my heart in, in, with, with, with the revelation that I'm, I'm gleaning a lot more from the Amplified now. But look at chapter, th this in the notes there. According, accordingly, God also, in His desire to show more convincingly and beyond doubt, I got underlined beyond doubt, to those who were to inherit what? The promise... The promise, just like we talked about uh, uh, Jehovah Jireh, God, you know, our provision is Christ. Amen. So He is the promise, and every other promise is through Him, right? Amen? So um, they inherit the promise that the unchangeableness of His purpose and plan intervened, mediated with an oath. This was so that by two unchangeable things, we, we, I preached on that 10, 15 years ago, uh, his promise and his oath, those are unchangeable. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. His promise and his oath. He swore by himself. How could he swear by anything higher than that? Does that make it pretty well assured? Okay. Uh, in which it is impossible for God to lie or to ever produce false or, or, uh, or deceive us. We who have fled to him for refuge might have mighty indwelling strength and strong encouragement to grasp and hold fast the hope appointed for us and set before us. And, and, and set before us. Now, everybody say now. now. Now we have this hope. We have it right now as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. It cannot slip and it cannot break down under whatever steps out upon it. <laughs> Can I get an amen? amen? Whatever steps out upon it cannot change it. Even though sometimes it feels like it. Um, a hope that reaches farther and enters, enters into the very certainty of the presence within the veil. So there's a... See, the hope finds a certainty when, we, when we're living through, uh, on the other side of the veil. Always our hope is anchored through that veil. And, and we have a certainty when we enter His presence, when we experience His presence. 
you uh, remember in, in when we were in Birmingham that time, when you when you get when you get into that glory and in that presence, there's a certainty that you experience, right? And you and, and, and hope becomes almost becomes r r realized, where you're. It's no longer about what I'm hoping for, but it's something that I'm realizing is already mine. May not see it yet, but it's already mine. Um, now remains faith, hope, and love. Faith will be fully, uh, fully fulfilled. Hope will be realized. And love will remain forever. Um, and so we're, we're moving through this. But I just love the language here. Uh, where Jesus has entered for us in advance. And I wanted to finish that. I put three dots there. And, we're, and we have now also ascended and are seated with him. If you want to finish that, the reality of that verse. See, he, he went in advance, but we're not still waiting to go. According to Paul in Ephesians, we are already seated with Him in heavenly places in Christ. Amen? So we are already seated with Him. He went before us, and, we are, and, and our life today should be lived not in this world, but in, in, from, from that world. Everybody, I still, even though I changed Bibles, I still put my chart in here <laughs> of, the, of the, three, the three realms. Th Y'all still got that? Yeah. I know Pat, I've seen Pat pull it out a few times. The, realm, the heavenly realm is where we're abiding today. And forever, not just, we can, we can uh, our experiences can pull us into a place of, of think, you know, realizing we have surroundings here, but it shouldn't, it shouldn't capitalize our realization, shouldn't capital, capitalize our, our, our soul to the point where we don't stay seated and in, in with Him in that situation, where we are truly already um, in that place of, of being glorified with Him. Romans chapter 5 um, uh, verses uh, 1 through 5, this is also the Amplified. Um, Therefore, since we are, since we are, circle the R, justified, acquitted, declared righteous, and given right standing with God, God through the revelation of Jesus, through faith, through the, through the conviction of truth, let us grasp the fact that we have the peace the, of reconciliation to hold and to enjoy. To have and to hold from this day forward till death, till death has already made us, made us a pass through uh, beyond death. Amen? Amen. Okay. Now, uh, peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Through Him also we have our access, entrance, introduction by faith into this grace, this state of God's favor. We have His favor this morning and this year um, in which we firmly and safely stand. And let us rejoice and exult in our hope of experiencing and enjoying the glory of God. I believe this year we're going to we're going to enter into more experience, just like we did this morning. Last week, you know, I was it was just there was just something about the presence that was here last week, but experiencing and enjoying the glory of God. Moreover, let us also be full of joy when we all get to heaven. Is that what it says? Now. And he put an. This is in scripture. The exclamation point's not mine. It's his. Now. Let us exult and triumph in our troubles. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> and rejoice in our sufferings, knowing, you know what, you know what my suffering is the most is not entering into his sufferings. Yeah. You know, I suffer the most with that idea that I'm not that I'm still suffering in my own life and not entering into his sufferings to relieve me from mine. And that's what, he's, that's what he goes on to say here. Uh, knowing that, the, that pressure and affliction and hardship produce patient and unswerving endurance. And endurance, fortitude, develops maturity of character, approved faith, and tried integrity. And character of this sort produces the habit of joyful and confident hope of eternal salvation. Jo the, the habit of joyful and confident hope of eternal salvation. Such hope never disappoints or deludes or shames us for God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Now, this hope thing, uh, I, got, I started chuckling last night when I 
because I'd already I was already planning to talk about this story, but when the little little thing you put on the about the mice with the little uh, hedgehogs. those hedgehogs? hedgehogs, okay, hedgehogs. They look like mice to me, but uh, <laughs> but they had their little. Did y'all see that? Did anybody see her post? So did y'all? Fun. Anybody? You saw it? Okay. Back in the 50s or 60s, I heard this story. I don't know if y'all, any of y'all heard this story uh, recently, but um, they did an experiment that they, they were working on the, the psychology or the mental uh, uh, endurance of, of how that affects our hope. And they, put these, they took these little, uh, little uh, what do you call them, Paul, that it's, big, it's, it's bigger than a... No, it's it's a jar. It's, it's a, but it's a lab jar that's a little bigger than. Uh, beacon. Oh, yeah, a beaker. A beaker. Yeah, that's a beaker. Uh, they put, had three beakers and they had three mice, and they filled them. They filled the beaker up with water to to the point where it couldn't touch the ground, the the, the, the bottom of the beaker, and they wanted to measure how long the the, the mice that when they're put in the water would would have hope. They won't, do, they won't do that stuff like that anymore, but back then they did. So, it's, I mean, I'm not trying, I'm, I'm not a, I, I don't hate mice. I don't really like mice. I had to clean out a silo in Montana back in the 70s. It had like 400 rats in it running all over me. Uh, that was a fun, fun thing. Yeah. And I did have to do a few things with some of those mice. That, uh, but anyway, another story. Uh, but they, they put them in there and they let them tread water. And you know how, and guess how long they, they lasted? Not very. Not very. 15 minutes. They all gave up and went down and drowned. Yeah. So then they took three, the, the same beakers and they just poured, poured this them. Is true. This is a, This is true. <laughs> this is true. And they put, and what they did the second time was, they knew how long the mice would last, and before they gave up hope. And so they put three new mice in the same beakers of water, and at about 14 minutes, they took all three of the mice out. And then they, they, you know, fed them and they let them, you know, recuperate. And then a little while later, when they were fully recuperated, they put them back in the water. Now this is this speak. I, I mean, I was kind of almost like teary, in teary back because this speaks of this speaks of redemption. But he put them he put them back. They put them back in those beakers, and guess how long they lasted? Sixty hours. Sixty hours that they treaded water in there because, and that's when I started chuckling because you, at that I'm, I'm telling you at the very same time she posted that about them having the little inner tubes on their necks. And so they were all just, you know, they were just the hedgehogs or whatever they were. They were all just laying back, enjoying being in the water now that they had their little inner tubes around their necks. And I thought about that. That See, that's where, that's where the hope made the difference. And so that's what he's saying through all of this, all these troubles. And we have, we have an, the hope, of, confident hope of eternal salvation. So even through all this... It's causing, we don't think, we think it's being harmful to us to go through some things. But it's working in us, his character and nature. I mean, we're, there's, there's, a, there's a benefit to our lives, and this hope has the, has, is an important part of that work. I, I thought that was just, I thought that was an interesting way of illustrating the hope that we now have in Christ. That even though, see, the world doesn't have that hope, so they're going to quickly you know they're they're going to quickly panic and give up because they don't have they don't have what God wants to give every person and that's that anchor that he is their hope and he is the, their desire and that, that no matter what the circumstances in the end we have the hope of eternal eternal salvation and that produces a habit of joyful you know I, I thought this I, I read this story not too long before I saw that other story about the mice but when the 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 children the early the first century when they were under Nero and some of these when they were marching these Christians into the arenas with the lions and stuff, the they were so joyful, and and they had they had they had, what what do we say earlier here? Uh, um, Exult and triumph. Yeah. Uh, 
anyway, it was like the certainty, uh, the certainty of the hope in his presence within the veil that they were so confident. Um, and they let us be full of joy now, it says, enjoying the glory of God now. Let us exult and triumph in our troubles. They were so they were, they had so much of the presence and and this hope, this eternal uh, promise of eternal salvation and hope, that they were walking into this situation with with singing and, and rejoicing, to the to the extent. And this is what I think. This is what I think when when it says in in John seventeen. I keep going back to that because I'm still I'm still working on how that manifests what he says about that the world will see. It says the world will see how much he loves us. Do you, want it, do you want the world to see yes. in you how much He loves them yes. and loves us? That the world, well, the, the, some of the guards that were taking these, taking these Christians in were so amazed by that that they, put, they took their uniforms off and joined them. Wow. They laid down their armor and, and their citizenship in, to Rome and, and, and entered into that Colosseum with those Christians because they were so... Uh, Changed by what they saw in that that they didn't have. See, they didn't have that. Can you can you imagine someone doing that? That had to be pretty evident on on in the eyes of those of those Roman soldiers. Uh, okay, now this is the part we got a couple of minutes. We started at twenty five after. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to wrap it up pretty quickly here. Uh, I'm gonna interrupt you. Yeah. No, well, I think what you were looking for was, and this is where it said, and character of this sort produces the habit of joyful and confident hope of mm. eternal salvation. I feel like um, I feel like I have a confident hope. I don't know that I always have a joyful, joyful hope. hope. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, in a trial, you yeah. know. Yeah. And it's like going, that yeah. what you were just saying, they had a joyful they not only had the confident, it was joyful. The joy of the Lord really was their was strength. Their strength exactly. Wasn't it? And it became the strength in the hearts and the eyes of the understanding of those that didn't didn't believe weren't weren't even believers. They did, they they mocked these people. Uh, they were using them as street lights and burning them, you know. But they were so moved by that joy, that joy, that joy unspeakable and full of glory that that I believe He wants us to live in and, and, and have in our in our and, and be in that presence. Uh, good morning, Mary. I just saw you come on. Uh, um, I know it's still cold up there, but you're letting some more of that cold air come down this way. Uh, we need to we need to work on keeping that north gate shut. Uh, but okay, so uh, this this part I want you to. Uh, I, I'm going to talk about this more. I don't have time today, but I, I wrote it down in the side in the side part. Um, perfect perfect love does cast out fear, doesn't it? That's First John four eighteen. His perfect love for us when it's realized, it's like you know, it's like. What Donna was saying, uh, sometimes we're not walking in the, the full revelation in, 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 in the, of that joy that we have available to us, nor do we have it in the ability of, of perceiving and walking in that perfect love. Uh, to, to be completely set free. Uh, that's what his, his, he wants us to be set free from any fear. Back up in, in that Hebrews chapter 2 section there, the third section in your notes there. But I, I, I look at, uh, and we'll talk about this more, but I look at the story of Joseph. Uh, Joseph, it says, was a, <laughs> when he was in prison, that he was a prosperous man. I'm thinking, what? Because God saw Joseph as he was uh, in, in spite of the circumstances. And there was something about him, there was a presence about him, and that presence we all know is the strength of the Lord. He was walking in the strength and in, in revelation of Jesus Christ. He was walking in that. And so when he was sold out by his brothers, he didn't get into a place of grumbling and said, what am I doing? I'm, I'm, I've got the, you know, what did they do with my jacket? They took my, my coat of many colors off and uh, they, let, they put me in a pit and then they sold me into bondage. Next thing you know, he's in charge of Potiphar's house and everything in it. Why was that? Because he was grumbling and complaining and uh, in a pity party about his circumstances. So then he went from there to being falsely accused, and he went, uh, you know, Potiphar's wife um, didn't believe him, even though he was he, it was he, he was walking in perfect integrity. Next thing he did, he ended up in the prison. What happened within a few, just a short period of time was who was in charge of the prison? He was. 
He was walking in an integrity and in a rest and a peace and knowing who he was and knowing whose he was, that the circumstances didn't affect him except in a positive. It was, it was clearly evident to the people around him that who was with him. I want it to be clearly evident in my life who's with me. And, and you know, you know the, and I'm not saying this in condemnation to me or anybody else, but I'm just saying that as we, as we walk in this prayer that we prayed in the beginning and, and this prophecy about the desire of all nations, everything, every, this, this, all this stuff, is he wants to shake it out of our lives. Everything that can be shaken, he wants to shake. Um, and and, and, and uh, feelings and emotions are shakable, aren't they? He wants to shake, he wants to, he wants to, those are the things that can be shaken and he wants to remove those things so that our perfect peace and our perfect righteousness and our perfect joy and our perfect holiness and our perfect place in Christ and our perfect promise, which is Christ, and everything that Christ is and has can be in our enjoyment today and every day. I mean, I, that's, that's, that's what, that's what his um, desire for us, that he, our destiny is to become conformed to his son, right? That's his destiny. I say, Lord, let it be, a, just like Mary said to, to Gabriel, let it be, a, be unto me according to your word. I want, it, I, want, I want it to be unto me according to your word. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, now, 2 Corinthians chapter, I want to finish with this. We're, we're, this is the amplified version of that, of that scripture. For as many... Um, as are the promises of God, they mostly find their yes. No, nope, wait a minute. I've got that. They all find their yes. That's the answer in Him. So y'all, Tina and everybody was prophesying this all this morning before I wrote this in a new version today. But look how it clarifies everything y'all were prophesying. Uh, the answer, uh, uh, they all find their, their yes answer in Him, Christ. For this reason, we, are, we also utter the amen, which is so be it, to God through him. So it's not even, it's not even us. It's, 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 look, at, look at what our amen is. Underline that. We utter amen to God through him, through Jesus. He's the amen that's in us and saying the amen that's the, that's the, that's the power of the promise. Amen. In his person and by his agency. So in his person, the I am lives in all of us. And it's his agency that we say amen through. That's why he says when you ask, and I want you to, I want you to think about this. When he says, whatever you ask in my name, what he's saying is, Who, whatever you ask as the I am in you, I will do. See, we're do, if we're doing it, you know, to ask for a particular job or whatever, but we understand the agency by which we work, then, our, then we're only going to say and do what he, we see the Father say and do, just like the, just like the Son did. Can we go, uh, let, let's go here. Now, so um, what are two important promises? This is what I want you to see. That there, there's there's 7,700 promises or more um, But these two I want, us to, I want us to really focus on this morning. 1 John chapter 2, verse 25. Always throws me off when they put Psalms and Proverbs in the back of the Passion Translation because I'm, I'm thinking, surely it can't be that far uh, to John, 1 John. 1 John chapter 2. And he himself has promised us eternal life of the ages to come. And, and the, I, I like the, what, does anybody have the New King James Version? This promise, he promised us even eternal life. This is the promise he promised us, which is eternal life. So that's the first promise, and that's the one that delivers us from the fear of death. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because we are alive in Him today. Jesus said, He that lives and believes in me shall never die. Mm -hmm. 
Do you, and he said, do you believe this? If we believe this, we're going to say through him right now, amen. I believe that. That's, that's, that's a promise that, that I'm talking about promises that really change our hope, change, changes our, the realization of our hope. But I love that. The amen is uttered through him. He gives us in our heart by the power of the Holy Spirit, being the love of God being poured out. Our, he gives us this, this amen, not as though it's our amen, but as though it's his amen. Do you think his amen is a little more powerful than my amen? We get to do that. We get to, we get to utter his amen. So he gets to be both the, the author and the finisher, right, of our faith. Okay, um, now the second one is in, in John. Let's, I'm going to spend just a minute there. Y'all, are y'all still okay? Yes. John chapter... John chapter 14. I love the footnotes in John 14. I could spend about six months in John 14, and we might do that. Uh, John 14. John 14, verses 16 through 20. Let's, let's read this, and I'm going to read it in the Amplified in verse 13. It says, And I will do, I myself will grant whatever you ask in my name as representing all that I am. <laughs> Is all, and the I am, of course, is what he said. To, remember what he said to Moses? And he says, you know, about deliverance, about what, what am I going to say to, what am I going to say to Pharaoh? He said, I am sent you. That's all you got to say. So I am is sending us to, to, what, to, to as the desire of all nations, he's the one that's, that's, that's uh, working through us. Amen? So he says, uh, uh, so that the Father may be glorified and extolled in and through the Son. Uh, now, uh, in verse uh, 16, um, I, I will ask the Father and He will give you another comforter. Now look in the, in the, in the Passion Translation. Um, I will ask the Father, and He will give you another Savior. Now, that, that, that kind of bothered me at first when I saw that. Did it bother you when you just heard that a little bit? But look at, the, look at the footnote on that. The Holy Spirit of truth, who will be to you a friend just like me, and He will never leave you. The world won't receive Him because they can't see Him or know Him. That's what the desire of all nations is working through us to, to change. But you know Him intimately because He remains with you in, the, in Christ, the spirit, of, the spirit of God was in Christ, and will live inside you. Now let's go on uh, and read this next part just because it's so good. I promise that I will never leave you and helpless or abandon you as orphans. I will come back to you. This is what I was saying earlier. Uh, soon I will leave the, this world. And he wasn't, see, he wasn't talking about the last day here. I'm going to come back to you in the form of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so notice that. Soon I will leave this world and they will see me no longer. You will see me no longer. But you will see me because I will live again. And you will come alive too. Isn't that a wonderful promise? So, so when that day comes, you will know that I am living in the Father and that you are one with me for I will be living in you. So he says that the Holy Spirit's going to be living in us and that's going to be the Son living in us. Now look at this footnote. Uh, under, under that uh, where it says that the, I will give you another Savior. It says the Greek word alos means another of the same kind. Now this is the second promise I want you to see. You, you got the, what's the first promise of, that, give, that gives us hope, eternal life? Uh, this is the second of the two promises. You see this? As Jesus, uh, as Jesus is the Savior from the guilt of sin, the Holy Spirit is the Savior who saves us from the power of sin by living through us in, uh, in fullness. So he becomes, now, but look at this other part down lower here. Uh, 
The, this translation has chosen the word Savior for it depicts the role of the Holy Spirit to what? Look, to protect, defend, and save us from ourself <laughs> and our enemies and keep us whole and healed. So that's, that's how he's of the same kind. Jesus, he's, he's the Spirit of, of the Lord. So the Savior is still involved, but he uses the word Savior because of the ministry as Jesus saved us from our sins and given us eternal life, the Holy Spirit uh, is, is given to, is a Savior to protect, defend, and save us from ourselves and our enemies and keep us whole and healed. Isn't that, isn't that beautiful? Uh, he is the one who guides and defends, comforts and consoles. Keep in mind that the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ, our Savior. I love that. He clarifies it. Now, let's read the rest of this because it's just, just, I hope you all are studying this when you read uh, the, the Passion. The Aramaic word uh, parakleta, which is also taken from two root, root words. You remember, we're, we're dividing words up, Tina and, yes. and Sharon, Sharon. Uh, the, um, the two root words, to, pro, uh, to uh, um, prog, to end, finish, or to save. And then number two, light, lita which means the curse. What a beautiful word picture. The Holy Spirit comes to end the work of the curse of sin in our lives and to save us from, from its every effect. Amen. What a ministry that we have in the Holy Spirit. Every effect of sin He wants to save us from, deliver us from. Beautiful. Amen. Let's take, let's take communion together this morning. Those are two wonderful promises and that's, that, it causes hope to really be exalted in our hearts when we understand like y'all were all prophesying before we ever got started today, that we think this is, that this is something we're doing. But even the amen is Him. So don't be, don't be uh, discouraged or dismayed because the am is the one that's declaring the yes to the promise that He made by, the, by His own works. Amen? The finished work of Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Mark. Eric and the... Passion translation on my phone when it drops down for Savior right there. Uh huh. It has that same paraclitos. Uh huh. But it says a technical word can be translated defense attorney, one that is called to stand next to you as a helper. Oh, yes. I love that. Defense attorney. The Holy Spirit is our defense attorney. Yes. And, and, and where, does, where does that defense attorney actually have its greatest effect? She pointed right away, she pointed. See? Here's where we think we're guilty. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit's witnessing to us, nah-uh-uh, don't you remember what Jesus did for that that you're feeling that concern about? That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It says, various translations have rendered counselor, comforter, advocate, encourager, intercessor, helper. However, none of these words alone are adequate and fall short in explaining the full meaning. The translation has chosen the word Savior for it depicts the role of the Holy Spirit to protect, defend, and save us from ourselves. That's, yeah. that's yeah. the biggest. We are our biggest enemies, in yeah. our, and the enemy is in our mind. The lie is in our mind. See, the enemy is, has no power except what we give him through our mind not being transformed into the reality of who we are yeah. and whose we are and what we have because of what he's done. Yeah. Beautiful. It's a, it's a beautiful... Uh, I just love... And I'm loving the, 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 the way that the, the um, amplified version enhances and, and, and correlates so well with the passion. Also, the defense attorney thought brings to mind that he is a righteous judge. And we always yeah. think of judgment. But he's a righteous judge, so he will always rule in our favor. Amen. Because we have this defense attorney. Mm -hmm. So if we go before the court in heaven, then it's like... Well, and this, you know, see, again, that's because we're, yeah. we don't want to come boldly because we, we don't yeah. think we should come boldly. Yeah. Uh, but the Holy Spirit says there's nothing, there's nothing yes. that, that, that you have to be concerned or fearful about. Yeah. Perfect love is cast yeah. out the fear. He rules against the yeah. enemy yeah. who is trying to Who's, cause all this craziness. All right. So yeah. Uh, we're, we're in great shape, aren't we? That's a good, that, what a wonderful, what, what a wonderful truth when you really, when the, the Holy Spirit begins to really unveil Jesus. What a, what a rest 
oration mm -hmm. that that's causing in us. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, Lord, that you said that if you promised us that if we eat your, your flesh and drink your blood, that we would have your life in us. And you said that, uh, that I want to read that correctly, the first the part before that. Uh, I'm, I'm the bread, verse 35 of, of chapter 6. Uh, Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. Who comes to me will never go be hungry, and who believes in me, cleaves to me, and trusts in me, and relies on me will never thirst anymore at any time. Amen. Amen. <laughs> See, that was him amening that, because that's his heart in us. Uh, Uh, this is a. Let me go on. Let's see. Jesus said to them, verse 53 I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, you cannot have any life in you unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood. Unless you. And this is the, 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 the amplified. Unless you appropriate his life and the saving merit of His blood. Amen. Uh, he who feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has and possesses now eternal life. So no, we're not getting eternal life when we get there. We're getting eternal life right now. We have it right now. And this is the, this is the illustration that he, that he made there. Amen? Amen. Uh, he who feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has possesses now eternal life, and I will raise him up from the dead on the last day. Thank you, Lord, for the, the, the promise of your, uh, this new covenant in your body and your blood is the surety of this covenant. It's not based upon us anymore like the law was. It's all about what we did. This is about what you did. And there's no shadow of turning in it. There's no, there's no discrepancy to your finished work. No deficiency in your finished work, and it's as it is, as it's applied to our lives. And Lord, we just appropriate that this morning. Uh, we we uh, appropriate your life and the saving merit of your blood. Thank you, Lord, for your body, and that what the Holy Spirit wants to do, as we are being fur further and further understanding that that the the fl your what you did in your flesh, Lord, be it unto us according to your word in Jesus' name. Thank you for the blood of the new covenant that seals us into, the, in, into this covenant relationship, not based upon us, but upon the blood of Jesus and what he did for us as us in our place on the cross. We thank you for that, the effect of that. We thank you for the reality of that. We thank you for the promise of it. We thank you for the hope that it causes in our life not to be afraid of death and to be able to embrace the life that you've given us by the power of the Holy Spirit that's giving witness to this truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I love you all, and, and we'll, see you, we'll see you next week. And uh, again, we've been praying for everybody. We're continuing to pray. I, I, didn't, I don't know if I saw Lana on there this morning yet, but praying for those in Tennessee and California and up in, uh, in uh, Missouri to have... A fellowship um, that you can have locally as well as joining with us. We just love the fact that you're part of our body. Uh, but we're, we're continuing to pray for that as well. So we'll see you. We'll see you next week. God bless you. Can I read one? Uh...